Now to visit with George Carroll, a man who bills himself as the homeless motivational speaker and talk about his unique journey. George, thank you so much for being in here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dave. Hey, my friends, it's George Carroll, and I'm here in Springfield, Oregon, and I'm here with an amazing group of bus drivers, and they have an important message for you. Good morning, everybody. All right, so before we jump in, here's what we're gonna do. Everybody stand up. Yes, it's one of those. And give as many heartfelt hugs as you can in the next two minutes. Ready, go. Get in here. Hi. Give me some of this. Thank you. Don't be shy. You already got everybody. You did. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Don't get too comfortable, and here's why. How many remember Blockbuster Video? Oh man, they were the leaders, right, in their industry. They were one of the first larger companies to come out and do rental videos, right? And then what happened? And as a result of the demand for streaming online, and remember Redbox came out, totally changed the industry. They put more locations in more places by putting those kiosks in there. They dropped the charges, and pretty soon, people stopped going to Blockbuster. McDonald's, top three recognized brands in the world, their sales have plummeted over the last few years as a result of them being too comfortable. In fact, they will close this year anywhere from 700 to 900 stores. So comfort, remember this, write it down, remember this somewhere in your universe, that comfort is the enemy of innovation. All right, double clap. Yes. If it's not working, don't fix it. <laughs> Here's another one. Customer purchased a Dell and the monitor was dead on arrival. Hey, he called Dell customer service. This one's pretty funny. He called customer service at Dell and he got in touch with a guy who had a heavy accent. And the, heavy, the guy said, okay, there's a CD that it came with. Why don't you put the CD in and it, it'll show you how to set up the monitor. And the guy is like, don't you find the irony in you're asking me to put a CD and I'm not going to be able to even see the monitor? So after about 40 minutes of being on hold, uh, he finally got a manager and said, okay, we're going to have to ship you a new one. Moral of the story is, get a Mac. <laughs> a man bought a new uh, MacBook Pro online and then returned it to the company immediately with a post-it note that said, my wife said no. So some of the higher ups got a hold of the story and eventually uh, they actually refunded the customer and then they sent him the MacBook Pro back with a note on it that said, Apple says yes. Yes! All right, take a deep breath in. Look at your neighbor and say, don't yell at me. All right, so notice your energy spike a little bit. We're gonna do it again, level 20. All right, ready? One, two, three. Yes! Hey, my friends, it's George Ira Carroll. I'm here in the heart of uh, the gas lamp in San Diego, and I'm out here doing free hugs for a couple of hours, and so I just wanted to bring you on this journey with me. Doors are open. The world needs more hugs. Get them on there hot. Uh, I know you want to. I know. Free. Limited time, free hugs, man. Limited I'm time. Handshake. I'm gonna handshake. Oh, come on. Are you gonna charge me? No, free. <laughs> All day free. Take oh, the hug. Take the hug. <laughs> Hey friends, it's George Ira Carroll. I'm here with an amazing group of people called Lawyers with Purpose, and they have a message for you. Your story matters. Now go tell it. Your story matters. 
story has value, doesn't it? Is that your story has impact. Do you recognize that? And do you know that your story is a unique, energetic blueprint that nobody else on this planet has? How cool is that? So I'm just a kid, right, from Pueblo, Colorado. As you, from a young age, my passion, my dream, my vision was to play professional football. Now I know you're looking at my massive five-seven frame <laughs> and thinking, gosh, she really does have the build for it. After that, I fell into a deep state of depression, started using drugs and alcohol as a way to try to stuff the pain. Moved to Denver, Colorado and thought, heck, you know, I, I gotta do something with my life. I gotta pay my bills. So I joined a, a small growing technology company and within six months with the hunger and the fire and the work ethic that I had, I moved into a management position and I started managing a team of 12 salespeople and I got a taste of what it was like to, to coach people and to mentor people and to teach and to train and I fell in love with that. But I hated my bosses. Anybody, can you relate to me? Just kidding, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Uh, George joins me in studio today. George, how are you doing today? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me, Kimberly. No problem. I'm really excited to be here because this is like my life's work. Right. It's about helping people overcome the limitations and the fears that we learn along the way right. so that we can step into a greater life for ourselves. So you can make a difference, my friends. And in fact, uh, it reminds me of a story of a man who used to walk the ocean. And as he would walk the ocean before he wrote every single morning, he would walk the ocean, he would watch the sunrise. And as he was watching the sunrise one morning, he sees this silhouette. It looks like it's dancing. And so it grabs his attention. He's still watching the sunrise and he gets closer and he realizes that it's not uh, somebody dancing. It's actually this little kid who's over here and he's you know, throwing these starfish back in the ocean like this. And all kinds of starfish, hundreds have washed up on the shore and the old man comes up to me and says, hey kid, what are you doing? The little kid looks up at him and says, oh hey, I'm just helping all these starfish uh, get back in the ocean. Picks another one up throws it in the ocean, and the man said, kid, as he looks up and down the shore, he says, hey kid, don't you see all of these hundreds of starfish? He's like, you can't make a difference. The little kid looked up at the man like this, bent down, grabbed a starfish, threw it in the ocean, and he said, it made a difference for that one. Hey friends, it's George Carroll. I'm here with my good friends at Opta, and they have a really important message for you. <laughs> 